In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create clean URLs for pages in your Bubble app. A clean URL has many benefits. It's easier to share, it's easier to remember, it's also much more SEO friendly. So you want to keep the URLs as concise as possible while still being descriptive. So I'm going to show you uh, a few different methods that you can use to keep your URLs clean in your own app. By the way, I have a full written walkthrough for this tutorial available now to all of my VIP members. If you're not yet a VIP member, you can sign up through the link in the description below this video and you'll get access to well over 150 tutorials uh, anytime you want from an easy to search database. Okay, so what do I really mean when I'm saying clean URL? Usually when you're working with a dynamic page and you have um, sent some data to the page, Bubble will insert the unique ID into the URL for you. This is a way to identify and keep the pages different for each record. Um, let's say that we're working with user profiles. So if your domain was myapp.com and then your page name was profile, this unique ID would identify uh, the specific user whose profile you're looking at. Now this particular URL is not very pretty at all. It's super long. Um, it doesn't really make any sense. It's just kind of a random string of numbers. Um, it's not, it wouldn't be easy to remember and it would be a little more difficult to share if you're limited in space as well with um, characters for your URL. Um, so take this and compare it to this shortened URL, which is much cleaner. The um, path here, which comes after the, the page name, um, is a name and this is much friendlier for your users and for search engines uh, to have your URL structured like this. So how do you get your URL to go from this up here to this at the bottom? I'm going to show you a couple different things uh, that Bubble has available to you. So when you have a page set to some type of content, in our example here, the profile page is expecting user content, you have the ability to define a field for a readable URL. Okay, so you'll see this option here in the property settings for the page. So if I click and open that up, it will um, give me only text fields that are under the user data type uh, to select from here. So I could select the first name, for example, and what Bubble will do is insert the value of this field in front of the unique ID. So I know at this moment I am actually making the, the URL a little bit longer, but I wanted to point this out because it does at least make the URL a little bit easier to identify. So um, let me do a workflow so that you can see how it looks um, when we run the page. I'm just going to have a button here to go to my profile and I believe I'm currently running as a user whose first name is Rachel. So this is just here, this is just a text element that I have typed in just so that I can show you guys um, what we're going to be talking about. But uh, I'm going to run this workflow so that we can see the URL in the address bar. So navigation, we're going to go to the profile page and the data to send is myself here. I just want to look at my own profile. So let me refresh this page. And I'm going to go to profile, which is basically just reloading the page and sending um, my user record here. So you can see in the URL what we've got. I have my domain. Um, I'm on the version test um, version of my app. Here's the page name profile. And then here is the path to my user record. Now, obviously, the unique ID is still in there. I am going to show you how to remove this in a second. But at this point, you do have um, you have improved the legibility of the URL just a little bit more. You've given it an identifier that's a little human friendly um, with that uh, readable uh, field there. So again, this option will present any text fields that are available now. How do we get it down to this where we can remove the full unique ID? You're going to have to change the structure of your dynamic page a little bit. Um, this is this is a trade-off, um, but if SEO is a high priority for you and a, and a cleaner URL is a high priority, it's certainly worth it. So what you would need to do is remove the type of content from the page. Uh, so now we are no longer required, nor can we pass data to the page in the same way as before. So when you navigate to a dynamic page like this and you do not have type of content sent, you actually cannot fill this out. It'll turn up an error because Bubble won't send it there. 
um, because it won't know what type of content you're working with. Instead, we're going to do it a little bit more manually by constructing the URL ourselves. So if I uh, change this workflow to go to the profile page, I'm actually going to use a different action. I'm going to use the open an external website action so I can type in the full URL on my own. So to start, I'll use website home URL. That's my base. This is great because if you're on version test or live, um, it will actually insert that for you. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping track of two versions of this action for your test and your live modes. Uh, and then I'm going to type in the name of my page. You don't need a slash because this website home URL will add a slash at the very end. Uh, so then you just type in your page name and then I will add another slash because now I'm at the point where I'm entering my path. Okay, so see how I have a slash after that and this is considered my path. Uh, and then my path, I will, um, that's where I define it myself. So um, I could type something in like this, okay, and when I go open this up, that's the URL that will obviously be in the address bar. But this is something that you'll want to make dynamic. So um, I'll, I'll get there in a second. So let me refresh the page so you can at least see what that looks like. Um, very straightforward. We're just constructing the URL ourselves. So if I go to my profile page, you can see I've defined exactly what I want it to be. Now I'm not yet doing anything with the path. We're going to have to extract this value so that we can have Bubble look up the user who owns this path um, to then use it, you know, reference that user throughout the page. Okay, so before I do that, how would you go about making this part dynamic? You know, I can't just type it in for every single person. Well, I would recommend adding a field specifically for this use case here with your, you know, cleaning up your URL. So I'll create a field called slug, which is kind of another word for what we're um, working with up here. Um, and this will just be a plain text. So for every user, they will have, and they should have a unique slug. Um, for that record because only one user can be pulled up when you go to a specific um, path on this profile page, right? I can't have two users with the same slug of Rachel. We wouldn't know which profile to display. Uh, so make sure that when you are saving slugs or having users create slugs uh, for themselves uh, or for whatever data type you're working with, um, that you do some kind of a validation check, make sure that no other record in the database also has the same slug. So if I open up uh, Rachel's uh, user record here, I'm going to type in a slug, we'll say R green, just a combination of her first name initial and her last name. So this is her unique slug, it's kind of like a username. Okay, so then when I navigate to this page, I can do something like this, where we do profile forward slash current users slug. So now it's dynamic. Um, and if you're having people navigate to other people's profiles, you would reference that user, not necessarily the current user, because this is the logged in person. Okay, so now let's see, I'm going to refresh the page again, just so that you can see our green will show up, go to my profile, there we go. So that was dynamically pulled from my user record. Okay, so then how do we extract this value to work with that user um, on the page? Uh, because we don't have um, a reference uh, just kind of natively through the page anymore. When you, you do, when you have the type of content set up, you know, if you were to do that, then you can have text easily reference the current page user because you've passed, you've passed data to that page and you can access all of their fields. But we don't have that with our path system. So let me remove that again. What you'll want to do is find some way to uh, uh, temporarily remember or, or do a lookup of the user and hold on to that reference so that you can um, reference it just throughout the page going forward. I like to use groups. For this, you could also use a custom state if you're comfortable with custom states. Um, but let's say I have this header group up here or just any group on the page. Maybe you have a main content page that kind of takes up the whole thing. Uh, or sorry, a main content group. Uh, but a group nonetheless uh, because it can act as a data source. So I've named it group selected user. I'll set the type of content to user. And then the data source is where we'll look up the user whose path or sorry, whose slug field 
matches the path in the URL. So we're going to extract this value to help us find the user record. So I'm going to do a search for users where I'm going to add a constraint here. I'll add a slug equals and now we need to extract the path from the URL. So slug equals get data from page URL. And when you do that, it opens up a secondary window for this get data function. Um, we, we're looking for a path. We're not doing parameters, okay? So make sure you change that to path. So if I go back here, so when the slug equals the path from the URL, that's the user I want. And if I have done all my validations and saving it properly so that everyone is unique with their slugs, then I should only have one user that matches. Um, and I'll go to the first item of that search to get that one user. Now my um, text and all my elements on my page can reference the group's users uh, information because this group is acting as that data source it's the one that's linking to that found record so I can do you know first name uh, last name we'll do the email as well just so you can see all of the information here okay so now I will refresh my page and this is a pretty quick lookup I mean it's not gonna you're not gonna experience a, a wait time at all so see how I loaded the page and it immediately found um, user and was able I'm able now to display uh, field values for that user because this group is acting as that data source if I go into um, debug mode uh, we can inspect this a little bit more so that you can see again how this is functioning I'll inspect my group and you can see the user value uh, because I set the type of content to user is this record here it found the record there's that data source that I created a search for user where the slug equals r green and r green is being pulled from let me click on that get path from page URL and uh, there we go there's the path that it found from my URL okay so now you can work off of this and, and clean up your URLs obviously it goes without saying that you should start um, start yourself you know uh, with a good foundation by naming your pages as concisely as possible as well right you certainly don't want to have profile hyphen version 2 version 3 backup whatever it might be try to keep these clean and concise um, so that they make sense for the app and the, you know the content of the page uh, that way the full URL is um, as clean as possible. Again, if you want to take a look at a written walkthrough of this exact workflow, I do have it available to all of my VIP members now, uh, and you can learn more about that membership and how to sign up for that in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.